Greetings, Guardians. My name is Bife here. After the passing of Lance Reddick, I stated that I would make a video talking about the full story of Commander Zavala. I didn't want to make it immediately at the time because I believed that that would be rather disrespectful. Keep in mind the way that YouTube and metadata works. There was a ton of stuff flooding the internet, and Lance Reddick's name was a much broader search term than usual. And I didn't want to make a video then because that would ultimately be a... Well, it would be a magnet to my channel and it would be taking advantage of someone's death. And so I decided to hold off out of respect. I feel like an appropriate grace period has now passed, and I think the time is right to tell the story of Zavala. This is one of those moments at which I would remind you all that whilst the commander is still in-game as of the moment of publishing this, and whilst there may still be lines of dialogue that Lance Reddick recorded before his death, this is the story as we know it thus far. So, if there's some grand conclusion to Zavala's tale that happened to be made before all of this, just keep in mind that that won't be in there. But I'm going to be covering everything up into this point, and hopefully that gives you a good idea of the story of Commander Zavala. I also want you to keep this in mind. There is a ton of lore about the Commander, and I'm not going to be mentioning everything in the story, just his major life events. If you look on Ishtar Collective alone, you'll find over a thousand entries of lore related to the Commander. For all those of you who want more stories, you can go ahead to Ishtar Collective and you can read up for yourself. And you can discover all of the wonderful extra stories that Lance Reddick helped bring to life. Whether it's Zavala's love of knitting, his close friendships with Amanda Holiday, Saladin, Ikora, and Cade Six, his many office meetings with the greatest of guardians and dignitaries from other species, or his silent evening patrols on the wall. There are literally thousands of stories to read about the man that we've all grown to respect and admire. Stoic and full of resolve, a shield against the misery of darkness, fierce in the defense of his friends, a fist brought to bear against our demons, compassionate and imparting of infinite confidence a figure outlasting the horizon, always waiting for our return. This is a brief retelling of the tale of our commander. This is the tale of Zavala. It all starts with a really simple fact. Zavala is an Awoken. This means that he was either one of the original passengers of the Exodus Green, or was a descendant of one of those passengers. Either way, as all Earthborn Awoken would have done, he followed Mara Sov from out of the singularity in which the Awoken began, known as the Distributary. In this time, he would not have been known as Zavala. He would have had a different name, a different identity. When he and the rest of the Awoken reached Sol, there was the discovery. Earth, the home of humanity, was in fact still inhabited by humans, but they clearly needed help. Many of the Awoken insisted that they should be allowed to leave and immediately assist Earth. Their brothers and sisters needed help now, not later. After much duress, Mara Sov acquiesced and gave all Awoken a single opportunity to choose their future. They could either stay amongst the Awoken or leave forever. It seems clear that Zavala was amongst those who chose to go and to help people on Earth. Thanks to the Zavala intro trailer from Destiny 2, we know that his ship crash-landed on Earth, and that it was left there for long enough that his fellow crewmates were naught but bones. But this was not Zavala's fate. His ghost, Taj, came and revived him, and as he crawled out of the wreckage of the ship that had borne him to Earth, he stared across a barren world full of danger. There would one day be a time when Zavala would join the ranks of the city's guardians. But before the guardians, there were the Iron Lords. Zavala would join their ranks as the protege of Lord Saladin, and whilst it's never clear whether or not he earned the title of Iron Lord, he did serve amongst their number. It was also here that he would meet his wife. One day, a medic and her people came to Lord Saladin's gates. In exchange for her skills and services, she asked for shelter for her people and herself. Her name was Sophia. Whilst they found themselves in stubborn opposition at first, 
As time wore on, Zavala and Sophia found love. They were truly brought together on the night when a fallen raiding party ambushed a caravan of civilians. After the battle was over and the smoke had cleared, Zavala and Sophia found an infant boy, orphaned by the battle, in the arms of his dead parent. Together, they resolved to adopt the young boy. They called him Hakim, and together, the three of them started a family. Happiness endured for a time, but such things are fleeting in the eyes of a guardian whose life is unending, and responsibilities to protect those around them are ever-present. One night, Zavala armed himself to fight off fallen raiders once again, but unfortunately this time, his son Hakim followed him into battle and was slaughtered by a fallen captain. Hakim's death weighed heavily upon Zavala, who had an unending number of lives to give and yet could not save the ones he loved who had but a single life to live. He asked his wife for forgiveness, but she told him that there was nothing to forgive. But as I'm sure many of you know, we need to forgive ourselves for our guilt to be truly gone. And Zavala, with all of his power and all of his responsibility, could not forgive himself. It seems clear that he even tried to destroy his own ghost, Taj, to embrace the mortality that had taken Hakim from him. But Sophia stopped him. From these moments onwards, Sophia and Zavala would break with each other. They returned to their old lives, but Zavala would never forget his partner, even after she passed away. He would continue to ask forgiveness of every generation of his wife's family as they passed onwards, and as he lingered. One day, Zavala would make his way to the city, in the days before it was truly worthy of being called a city. He stood shoulder to shoulder with the titans that called it home, and regularly stood in defense of the newly emerging bastion of humanity. He was amongst those that helped construct the city's walls, and stood proudly as the city's eight towers were completed. In those days, as the walls and towers were nearly completed, he also welcomed a young girl into the city by the name of Amanda Holiday. Little did he know at the time that she would grow to become one of his protégés as well as a fierce friend and a talented pilot. The exact moment of Zavala's ascension to the rank of Vanguard Mentor for the Titans isn't made perfectly clear, but it's likely that he ascended to the position upon the disappearance of Saint-14. Zavala's strategic brilliance and combat prowess would be an asset to the Lost City in many moments, whether it was at the Battle of the Twilight Gap, or during the many tactical strikes he conducted against high-value targets, such as Sepix Prime, Saber II, and the infamous Valastark. You might have heard of him, whether you wanted to or not. We would first meet Zavala in the times of our arrival in Destiny 1, he would usher Titans through their first steps in the new world around them. His story really came to the forefront though in Destiny 2, where he would direct Guardian forces as they retreated from the Red Legion's invasion of the Last City. On Saturn's moon of Titan, Commander Zavala would rally Earth's lightless forces until eventually, we came to help recover the Commander and save the many Guardians under threat by the Hive and Fallen. After we discovered that the Red Legion was trying to use the Almighty to detonate our sun, it was Zavala's resolve that spearheaded the momentum of our efforts to retake the city and reunite the Vanguard. Even without the light, he was the first of the Vanguard mentors to return to the fold, and his diligence and planning was instrumental in the efforts to defeat Dominus Gaul and free the Traveler. Later, when he returned to the Hellas Basin on Mars, and found the primary Warmind facility located there, Zavala would butt heads with Anna Bray. He believed that the Warmind was nothing more than a machine that should be controlled by humanity. This belief isn't hard to understand. To think of Rasputin as a person would have been difficult for Zavala, let alone an ally that could be trusted. You've got to remember that Zavala at one point stood shoulder to shoulder with the Iron Lords, and that the Iron Lords, his peers and friends, had all been slaughtered but for Lord Saladin and Lady Ephrodite, 
and all of this was done in the Plaguelands, at the hands of Rasputin, who wielded Siva like a blunt cudgel. Commander Zavala thought that the Warmind was dangerous, and he was right, but Anna Bray worked constantly to try and convince him that there was a possibility of working side by side with the Warmind. And as the emerging threat of the Worm God Zol returned, it became clear that Rasputin was more than a machine. He was indeed an ally, and he was powerful enough that they had to work together, and they had to trust each other. In Forsaken, he bore a silent burden. As the rest of the tower called for retribution, he knew that by forbidding guardians from going after Aldrin Sov, he may have been abandoning any chance for justice or revenge for Cade, but he was also protecting the rest of his friends, and us, from a potentially dangerous fate. We may have ignored him, and in the next year he might have felt his authority waxing somewhat as the guardians in the tower lost some respect for him. But in the end, Zavala, I dare say, made the right decision. To charge headlong into the reef might have brought disaster on the Guardians, and Zavala knew that he needed to make the hard decision to keep everyone possible together and alive. It was not the time for Guardians to amass and attack, and Zavala would not willingly send anyone else to their death. Sure, some Guardians might not like it, and some might even step out of line, but there was a point to Zavala's action. Guardians were needed at home as well as abroad, and we could not abandon the people of the city just to chase after the vengeance we desired. All this would prove to be incredibly true when the Warmind once again became necessary as far as allies were concerned, in particular against the Cabal. When the Scion Flayers sought revenge for the defeat of three of their leaders at the Sundial on Mercury, they launched the Almighty on a collision course with the Last City. Anna Bray and Commander Zavala joined forces once again in an effort to reactivate Rasputin. It was in this moment that Commander Zavala's perspective on things began to evolve. Rasputin admitted to Zavala that he had failed to save the people of Sol during the Collapse, and that it was his greatest shame. With this knowledge in hand, Zavala resolved to stand side by side with the Warmind, treating him like a true ally as he was meant to be, and together they struck down the Almighty and saved the city once more. This victory would unfortunately be short-lived. The arrival of the Pyramid Fleet a few months later would ultimately send the system into disarray. Zavala's newfound ally, the Warmind, would crumble into data. Whilst he approved the contact missions between Eris Morn and the Pyramids, Zavala suddenly also had to contend with a city of nervous civilians wondering if the world would fall upon them at any moment. Not to mention the fact that he was also managing the evacuation of Guardian forces on no less than four separate worlds, including some worlds which had members that would not willingly leave. It was during the time of Beyond Light, when things began to fall apart at the seams, that Zavala reached out to us on Europa and cautioned us against any excessive use of stasis. We may have embraced the power of darkness regardless, but Zavala's caution was perhaps a part of our ingredient for success. Without this caution, which was also recommended to us by Elsie Bray and Eris Morn, it would perhaps have been easy for many Guardians to fall to the corruption of the darkness, just as the Witness had intended. In the same time, a mysterious hunter was suddenly making his name known on the Tangled Shore. Aldrin Sov had been resurrected as a lightbearer named Crow, and after he had been liberated from the clutches of the spider, he was given a new station as the personal bodyguard of Commander Zavala, thanks to Osiris, who at the time being was Savathun in disguise. At first, Crow would also need to be in disguise, given that any who saw his face would understand who he had been in his past life, and to say that there was some hatred and animosity still there would be an understatement. Crow performed admirably in this role in the time that Zavala needed protection the most. Zavala had begun diplomatic relations and military operations against a new faction of Cabal, the Ascendancy, led by Emperor Kallus's daughter, Keitel. The Cabal Ascendancy was a fearsome potential enemy, 
But during the diplomatic dance that was conducted, a splinter force of Scion rebels within Keitel's ranks would attempt to accomplish their own ends. Twice they tried to assassinate Commander Zavala as vengeance for the Sundial and the Almighty, and twice Crow was instrumental in saving the Commander's life. In the second of these moments, where Crow's mask was destroyed and where he was most vulnerable, having just saved the Commander's life, being in a place where he could easily be executed, it was Zavala who extended a hand of friendship and was one of the first other than ourselves and Osiris to welcome Crow as a guardian. This, of course, also came after one of Zavala's greatest exploits, striking a deal that would allow peace between the Ascendancy and humanity without us ceding control and becoming a client species of the Cabal. This may have been at the suggesting of Savathun, who was wearing the guise of Osiris, but it was Zavala who had to undertake the gambit of putting his own role as a leader up on the line during the proving rites that Keitel had enacted. We saw the Cabal of Turobatl turn from potential enemies into a neutral force, and then they would grow into some of our staunchest allies. During the time of Savathun's emergence in the Witch Queen, Zavala would return to question our newly acquired powers of Deep Sight, which were assisting us in discovering the greater secrets of the Witch Queen's throne world. He also questioned a number of Ikora's decisions, all part of Savathun's plans to divide and conquer us, I'm sure. But regardless, the two would ultimately still be united in purpose, and their long friendship would mean that even questions of this time and this nature would not shake them. But what did shake was the commander's faith. It was in this moment that Zavala had discovered that the Traveler had gifted Savathun and the Hive with the light. It had not been stolen, they had been chosen. The Traveler had given it willingly. This was an insult that Zavala would not bear easily, and it started to sow a greater degree of discord within him. But this doubt would soon only be amplified further. When the Leviathan returned above our moon, Zavala was haunted by the visions of his long-dead wife, Sophia. Her nightmare's presence on the vessel required a binding ritual to lead to her exorcism. At first, Zavala failed. Once again, he had to confront the pain of the death of his son and the passing of his wife, the guilt that he held on to, and the inability to forgive himself that still plagued him. This was a burden that Zavala had carried quietly for years, decades, centuries. He had watched generation after generation of his wife's descendants pass from this world, and it plagued him still. But eventually, Zavala was able to confront his own guilt and forgive himself for the death of his son. Here in the darkness of the Leviathan, he was strong enough. He managed to give himself enough grace to turn the tide, and with that, the nightmare of Sophia would become but a memory. Her essence was bound in darkness still, but it was not an evil thing. It was just the stuff of thought, a person that he used to know. In the final moments as we pushed back Callus's forces on the Lunar Pyramid, we saw Zavala getting the opportunity to say one last goodbye to the memory of his wife. And at last, perhaps he was at peace with her passing. Zavala would continue his long, arduous command, and would eventually find himself on the helm during the time of Lightfall, when the Witness finally arrived and conquered the Traveler, scarring it with the portal that leads to an unknown location. In spite of this failure, he would continue to fight, even as he sensed the silence that now echoed from the great orb in the sky. This would not break him, but the passing of his close friend Amanda Holiday, that would. With her death, he was left bowed and faithless at last. The death of so many of his friends and loved ones over the years, all in the wake of the Traveler's silence, was becoming too much. This last ignoble note in his story might make you think that perhaps there was weakness in him, and I urge you to not make such a mistake of judgment. Steel is not tempered without a forge, a hammer, and an anvil. Bravery is not born without danger and fear. 
and every good leader works to take on the burdens of those they command so that we can all live to see the next sunrise. In the end, that is what Commander Zavala is and has always been. He is the seventh column that holds up the tower. He is the sunrise in the east and the sunset in the west. He is the strength to carry on and to lift up others before oneself. If there was perhaps one thing that I think we all might wish, it is simply to tell him how thankful we are that he's been our commander. This is the nature of his character, to ask for no praise even when he is worthy of it. For that is what a guardian is, one who shows devotion to the ideas of a better future, bravery against the coming darkness that would smother us all, and sacrifice for others so that we might all stand together stronger. Long may he lead us. May his name forever live amongst the greatest legends of the tower, so long as his light doth shine immortal across the universe. Thank you, Commander. Thank you, Lance. Perodasia Arastra. We will all see you starside. <laughs>